On the way up from Gary this morning, I was reading in a newspaper an account of a visit to Hebron, a Palestinian town occupied by Israel. An account by a man called Ian Jack, who people of a certain age in the audience might remember from his days in Belfast. And he provided a simple, factual account not in rhetorical terms, but as a matter of observation of a scene that he witnessed earlier this week on the streets of Hebron. He described a jogger running through the streets, a toned and tanned and healthy member of the illegal settlement of Israelis, which exists in the town of Hebron, and this jogger's running through the streets, not alone, but accompanied by a contingent of Israeli soldiers carrying assault rifles. One person, six armed soldiers, running through a town of 160,000 Palestinian people who are kept in bondage in an open-air prison so that a tiny community of racists, 500 strong, can live in the middle of their town. What a grotesque symbol of the moral inversion which exists in Palestine and which the whole world can witness in broad daylight. When we talk of the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people, we are talking about one of the great crimes of the 20th century. Another crime which was committed in any furtive way, out of sight of the eyes of the world. But a crime which was committed in broad daylight and which is today openly defended by the most powerful people on earth. Indeed, held up as a glorious episode in the history of humanity. There will be a time, and we hope it's not too long, when the world will look back at what is happening in Palestine today with a sense of shame and of outrage and perhaps even of bewilderment that such a thing could happen in the 21st century. The brilliant Israeli historian Elam Pape in his book published last year, The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine, has described in relentless, meticulous detail how the ethnic cleansing operation was planned and executed and described the involvement in it of those who were to become the highest officials of the new Israeli state. And of course, the justification, so to speak, for all that had to do with the Holocaust in Europe. The fact that Jews have been exterminated in Europe was used as excuse and justification and to provide moral approval for a crime committed against the Palestinian people. In other words, the Palestinian people were made to pay and are still today being made to pay for a crime committed in Europe by Europeans. What a horrible inversion of morality is involved in that. And one of the reasons, it's by no means the only reason, and probably not the most important reason, but one of the reasons that the West supports Israel and supports the oppression of the Palestinian people is that they find it easier to do that than to look their own sordid history of racism in the face. We who stand with the Palestinian people should be absolutely unashamed in rejecting that perspective and that analysis. We should be unashamed in campaigning for a boycott of the racist Israeli state. We should not allow ourselves to be guilt-tripped by references to the Holocaust because it is my experience 
that when we encounter anti-Semitism, and there is anti-Semitism in Ireland and elsewhere, north and south, and has been for generations. But in my experience, where I encounter overt expressions of hatred of the Jewish people, it is not in the context of Palestinian solidarity. It is not in the context of anti-war activity. Almost invariably, anti-Semitism, as it is commonly understood, is expressed by the very people who also stand in the forefront of defending the oppression of the Palestinian people. We should not be guilt-tripped by this or allow ourselves to be. We should campaign to ensure that in the shortest time possible, the idea of boycotting Israel becomes the common sense of politics in Ireland in exactly the same way as the idea of boycotting apartheid South Africa became the common sense of politics in Ireland. The issues are essentially the same. The morality is essentially the same. And there is no consideration in relation to the Palestinians which can stand against that morality. It is also true, of course, that the fight for Palestinian independence and Palestinian self-determination is not a distant issue from us. It is close to us, or ought to be close to us. And it is entirely appropriate that the official organisation of the working class of Ireland, the trade union movement, should, at its annual conference this year, have reaffirmed its policy of campaigning for a boycott of Israel. Because the forces in the world that sustain the oppression of Palestine are the same forces which in all regions of this earth are out to assert their control over the riches of the world. To take what's going on in the Middle East would not be happening were not the Middle East not built on an ocean of oil. What is happening in Palestine is part and parcel of the struggle of all the oppressed people of the world for liberation. It is part of the struggle of every oppressed nationality and of all the exploited working class people of the world against the ruling classes who seek to dominate our lives, our economics and our culture. When we stand against that, we stand for ourselves too. The Palestinian people in their indomitable persistency, their ability to preserve the idea of freedom through generations of misery, that both provides inspiration to all who fight for justice in this world. And they provide it particularly because Palestine today is the front line of the world. Palestine is the front line. It is there that we must win. A victory for the Palestinian people will be a victory not just in emotional or sentimental terms for those who offer solidarity. It will be a material victory because when the Palestinians win imperialism in the most important strategic region, region on earth will have been defeated. That will be a victory for us too. We should fight for the Palestinian people not just in terms of solidarity but as part and parcel of our own struggle against those who exploit and oppress people here on this island and right across the world. There where we must redouble our efforts. We must ensure as I'm sure Patricia and others will, that the trade union movement's commitment becomes not simply a, a resolution passed in a procedural way at an annual conference, but becomes the driving force for a campaign involving the entire trade union movement in Ireland, North and South, which in the end must impose its moral will on that minority in our society which wants to take a stand with exploitation and oppression around the world. As I say, the Palestinian people have fought literally for generations. You can go now among the Palestinian people and find people who are refugees from refugee camps. So long have they been in exile. We must speed the day 
when we can meet the Palestinian people free in the historic capital. I say for Palestine, today in Belfast, next year in Jerusalem, next year for freedom for Palestine, always next year for freedom for Palestine and through Palestine for freedom for ourselves, freedom for the world. Thank you very much.